had a brain the size of a hummingbird, he would fly backwards, wouldn't he? All right, now the recording is going. Sorry, folks out there, you missed some of our things this morning, all right? Um, all right, uh, let's take a look at our prayer needs. Um, uh, John's sister, Catherine? No. No? Betty. Betty passed away out in California. Right. Okay, all right. So. seven sisters since 2001. All right. So Betty passed away, so let's pray for uh, John's family. Uh, Billy will be having a procedure on Tuesday. Michael, thank you again for taking her. Um, Deacon, you've got a procedure coming up. He was talking to Fred. Okay. All right. Be, hey, listen, I'll, stay on your toes. I might call your name out here. Deacon, do you have something coming up? Yes, he does. When? Don't know. You don't know. Okay, all right. Okay. So he's got something coming up. So let's keep uh, let's let's keep him in our prayers. Um, a cousin of Lynn and Beth's are, is going to be having bypass, and so um, keep Steve in your prayers. It's not me, Steve. It's another Steve. Um, uh, always be praying for Tim. I'm going to ask you to keep praying for my. Uh, my stepfather Miller, uh, who needs something done, and we're not getting there quite yet. Uh, Jim, you all know little Jim, short Jim. I'm not going to say his name because that way we don't have to edit the the podcast. But um, Jim is going to be having a procedure um, tomorrow, and it's something he put off for the last ten years because he was taking care of his wife. All right, everybody with me? Okay, but he's going to have a procedure tomorrow. He heard the podcast last Sunday, and um, he said that no, it's not a brain implant. <laughs> All right, so it's something other than that, so I won't guess any more than that, okay? Um, I've shared with you last week, uh, we have a, a little three-year-old in our family that fell uh, with a concussion and a broken collarbone. Um, he was actually climbing on top of the refrigerator to get some candy that was off limits and fell off the top of the refrigerator. So those little ones that know how to climb, yeah, buddy, they do, don't they? All right. Um, I've got a good friend that has to have some procedures done. Uh, first name is John, so um, if you'll keep John in your prayers. And then, obviously, let's keep our graduates in our prayers as they start making plans for um, what's next. Um, Bill needs our prayers. He's got some issues with his legs. And um, uh, Michael said that Scott and Autumn need our prayers. Um, uh, Scott will be deployed very soon. And uh, so let's keep Scott in our prayers. And um, then we want to just welcome Ruby and Angel and, and yes, and Sean. We want to welcome Sean. See, Sean, I told you, stay on your toes. I might call your name out. Pastor, yeah. Has a yes, Ruby. Um, I'm having complications with my pregnancy. My daughter's not working around. And I just like a prayer. Alrighty. We can sure do that, can't we? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, uh, yes, Debbie. She has to have her wisdom teeth took out Wednesday. Ooh. No. Well, I would say something about losing any kind of wisdom that she already has, but I won't I won't say anything. I'm not saying a word. I didn't say a word, did I? Okay. Sherry. Yeah. Wow. She's going through a pretty hard time. Oh, boy. You're not a kidding. Okay. All righty. Paul? Uh, Gabriel Martz. Ga- Gabe. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Sure enough. Okay. Well, let's pray. All right. So, Lord, we're grateful for uh, an opportunity to share with each other our current, our concerns and and we thank you lord that 
as much as we lean on those everlasting arms, as much as we stand on the promises, uh, we know that you'll always be with us. Uh, We know that you've given us plenty of strength, uh, plenty of courage, uh, plenty of wisdom, as we kidded with Lexi, but you've given us lots of things. And so we pray, Lord, just like the Father who came to you with his child, asking for you to heal that child, and you ask him this question, do you believe? And he said, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, we're all in the same boat together. Help our unbelief. When we find it hard to believe, when we find it hard to stand on the promises, when we find it hard to lean on your everlasting arms, help us. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with John and his family as they've had to say farewell to yet another sister. We pray that you'd be with Jim as he goes in for surgery tomorrow. We pray that you'd be with Billy as she goes in for her Uh, procedure on Tuesday as uh, Deacon looks forward to another surgery. We pray that you'd be with Silas as you uh, help him through the concussion and the broken collarbone. We pray that you'd be with Steve as he's facing his uh, heart procedures. We pray for John as he actually has to face the same procedure. Tim with his condition, we pray that you'd keep him strong. We pray that you'd bless Miller as he needs to go in for a CAT scan to see how extensive uh, his melanoma is. With Bill and his issues with his legs, uh, with Scott who's being deployed, we pray that you'd be with he as well as his family. We pray that you'd be with Gabe and his stomach. And we pray, Lord, that you'd be with Ruby during her pregnancy, that you'd bless this little baby and help it to grow. Lord, we pray that as Shannon gets ready for all of the other things that she has to face now, we pray that all of the procedures would be successful. And we know that you're the great physician. You handle all these details. Bless her through this difficult time. Lord, as we think about our graduates and Going on to the next stage in life, we pray that you'd bless our kids that are going off to college. Help them, Lord, as they take this big leap of faith. We pray that you'd bless uh, others that have gone on to careers now after graduating. And we pray, Lord, that you'd bless them in those endeavors that they might serve you and other people around them would be blessed by it. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us. And in this pandemic, we still want to pray for those who are taking care of those who are ill. Uh, Nurses, aides, and nurses, and doctors, and hospital staff. We pray, Lord, for the folks who have to go out in ambulances and transport those who are sick. Officers who have to interface with people that, quite frankly, who knows if they're ill or not. And so we pray that you'd be blessing all of these first responders, these caregivers. We also pray for folks who have contracted this virus, and we pray that you'd give them strength and blessings and help them make it through it. Thank you for keeping us safe. And we pray, Lord, that you'd bless us as we try to remain safe through all of this. And we ask, Lord, now, that as the preacher opens up this, your word, that it would flow like fresh water from a stream, that it would be sweeter than honey from the honeycomb, that it would be milk to those who are less mature. It would be meat to those who are more mature. It would be bread enough to live on, not the bread of this world, but the bread from heaven. And as we open this, your word, we pray that the preacher could rightly divide it. To this end, we ask that your spirit would now speak. In Jesus' high and holy name, we ask it. 
Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible into Matthew chapter 24. Rarely do I preach the way I'm about to preach. I normally preach a long passage and explain line by line and verse by verse, and I love doing that. But today I'd like to take this more on a topical basis, and I want to preach to you from not a verse of Scripture, but only a part of a verse. As you find Matthew chapter 24... I want you to find verse 15, and I'm only going to read in my Bible the words that are printed in black. Oh boy, watch out, here it comes, right? The preacher might have a surprise or two, I'm not sure yet. Now, although it's a short phrase, I'm going to invite you to stand with me, and we're going to get back on track with our normal routines of standing when God's Word is preached. Now, in my Bible... The majority of verse 15 is printed in red. The last, oh, six words are printed in black. Those last words are this. Whoever reads, let him understand. All right, ready? All of you, do this with me. Ready? One, two, three. Whoever reads, let him understand. Now you may be seated. A couple of things I'd like to say as we get started. When we take a look at a passage of Scripture like this, and I like a red print Bible, I like that, because eminently you can always discover the exact words of Jesus, right? In this verse, that phrase is in black, meaning that Jesus didn't speak them. Now, hold on to me. When we take a look at this, we understand that the inspiration of Scripture is it comes in two phases. Are you ready? And if any of you came on Wednesday nights, two different times I've taught on Bible 101. How did we get our Bible? How is it inspired? Uh, through whose hands did it travel before it came to us? Um, uh, the original languages of the Bible, uh, how they were translated from that language to this language. To me, that's an, a fascinating uh, uh, group of Wednesday night uh, lessons we had. I'll do it again uh, if you beg, borrow, and steal me to do it, okay? Amen? All right, okay. But I, I love that. Bible 101, I, I love that. Here comes inspiration of Scripture broken down into its parts. We know from 2 Timothy 2.15, 2.16, 3.16 that all Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now what that means is that God breathes it out, but it has to be received by someone. Uh, think of this, if you don't mind. Um, uh, mouth to mouth resuscitation. Okay, if I were to do that, uh, I, I've taken the training a number number of times. I've only done it on Lynn before. Uh, you can smile at that. Okay, all right. But anyway, I would blow out, but it's not like me blowing into the air. It has to be received into someone else's lungs for me to try to keep them alive until the emergency squad gets there, right? Okay, so watch this. The first part of inspiration of the Holy, uh, of the Holy Spirit by the Scripture is that it is breathed out by God. A person has to receive that. Now they get the Word of God, they hear it, they grasp it, but then it has to go somewhere else in order for us to have it in our Bibles, right? And so a human inspired by the Holy Spirit would write it down. When we see verse 15, we see evidence that the Holy Spirit told Matthew to write this. Then in this phrase, the Holy Spirit tells him, tell the readers that they need to understand what I just said. 
And that's why Matthew wrote these words, but they're in black. Matthew, Jesus didn't...